Well guys, this is what, 18 pallets of interlocking brick pavers looks like. <laughs> Woo -wee. I got my work cut out for me. So first things first, first thing, I like to put S's on the ends of everything, whatever. First thing first, first things, things, I don't even know how the saying goes, whatever. What we're gonna do is we got a gas axe rented right here. We had already cut this driveway, but then we had trucks rolling on it and bashing it and mangling the edge again. So we got to recut this line right here. So I got a little board, straight edge here. Run the gas axe along there, cut that, and then we're gonna just start laying brick. Now I'm doing, uh, these are all, I think they're six by eight approximately, old country pavers. They're called, made by uh, Abbotsford Concrete Products, which is uh, on the mainland here in Vancouver. So all the bricks I'm using are this size, and I'm gonna do what's called a herringbone pattern, where I'll put one rectangular this way, and then they all kinda follow that herringbone pattern. Looks really nice, I've got two different colors here. I got a natural and a shadow. So one's kind of more of a charcoal gray color, one's more of a tan earth color. And I'm gonna mix those on a two to one ratio. So two natural, one shadow. So I'm just gonna keep bringing stacks, or Justin's gonna keep bringing stacks to me. Two stacks of natural, one stack of shadow, and I'm just gonna start randomly laying them all down in a herringbone pattern. I really don't care about my layout being you know, parallel with the house or whatever, because once you have this kind of random pattern, how it meets the house and the driveway and whatever, it all looks good. And once the border is locked into this, this driveway here, we'll work our way up, cut the border on the sides. I'm using this plastic beast edge, it's called, which is a plastic edge retention thing. You hammer into the ground with big galvanized spikes. It's a lot pricier than the mortar, a mortar set edge, but it, it's really fast. And it's, once it's in, it's done. You just throw some sand on top, hose everything down, tamp it, and your driveway is perfect, ready to go. You don't have to let the mortar set and all that sort of stuff. So we're just going for speed right here. So, all right, cue the time lapse. So we are just spreading out the sand in the last little section here. The slinger couldn't shoot this far in the yard, so we have to wheelbarrow it. Justin's doing a magnificent job of that. So we need to just get about two inches of sand on this whole area. We've already tamped this three or four times with just the road base here. Graded it out so it's really close to level with the right slopes and stuff. These are my septic tank hatches right here. I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with those yet. I'm probably going to build some 
sort of uh, two by pressure treated lids that'll go over top and then I'll cut them down flush with the bottom edge of the brick and then I'll glue glue some brick on top so that it looks like it's just the same patio over and there'll just be a little square cut line where you can lift those hatches out but it'll look like it's just a part of the patio that's the plan anyways well I got you guys here I'll give you a few little pointers on how to lay the brick so that it doesn't uh, your patterns just don't start to wander that's the tricky thing about pavers is especially when you're going on uneven surfaces your patterns can start to shift it's hard to keep the bricks and all the joints tight especially when you're on a hill all right so once you got make sure your grades good out in front of you these tips are pretty obvious to anybody who's laid brick before but if you guys are noobs and you're just starting out it's pretty simple but there are a few techniques for keeping these straight so when you lay your brick in the pattern don't set the brick down into the sand and then try and push it tight the way I do it is I take wherever the corner joint is and I hit the brick in like that to keep it snug and then drop it down because if you put it down in the sand and then try and move it the sand will bind up into the joint right there right and then you got gaps right here and then we pull that away you can see there's little pebbles right there that get into your joints that'll just destroy your pattern you want to keep everything super tight so you just keep laying your bricks one at a time right as you go just hit it in drop it down that way you don't get any pebbles or joints in your cracks your pattern stays tight and then every so many courses once you've done about maybe three four courses out you want to come along I got a five pound sledge here and tap everything to keep it tight so if you don't keep tapping things to keep everything tight your pattern can loosen up and when you hit with the sledge you don't want to hit on that edge because you'll chip your brick so you always want to come in and contact down low on the brick so if you do this every three or four courses keeps everything nice and snug and everybody will be saying how did you get your bricks so tight and then once we're done this we're going to take sand fine sand and wheelbarrow put a couple wheelbarrows of sand all over this and then hose it into the cracks and the fine sand will get down and fill up all these cracks and really lock the whole thing together once we've got our edging in place The other reason I use this beast plastic edging is because I can just snip out these little 
tabs in here like this. It makes the edging really flexible for doing curves and stuff like that. Tight radius curves. And then I can lay them out on the brick just like so. I'll take a little crayon marker and hit that line. And then I got my cut line, beautiful curves. It allows you to lay out your whole curve, how you want your driveway to transition. Then you can stand back, look at it, finish, play around with it a little bit, you know, just adjust things a little just right. And then when you're done, you have a nice, fluid, sexy edge on your board, on your driveway. So, otherwise, laying out these curves, you'd have to have some strips of wood or something that you were bending to try and do the same thing. But the wood is not going to be quite as easily flexible as this plastic stuff is. So, worth the money because it saves so much time. All right, well, it's Thursday evening. That's all we got done for today. This is all pretty much great and tamped, ready to rock with sand for tomorrow. So we've got about six or 700 square feet left to lay. Might be able to get that down tomorrow. I still got a bunch of work to do on the borders, but we're making some progress. So there you have it. It's amazing what you can accomplish with just a lot of beast mode action, a gas ax, tamper in your bare hands. I can't wait to get the finished sand on here, all the edges done, and just have a party. I think a patio of this size deserves a party. Maybe I'll invite some of you guys, some locals, eh? But yeah, that's this week's mission. If I gotta work into the weekend, I am going to finish this patio so that next week, boom, framing up this deck. Oh yes, yes. Other exciting news is we've got plans for the shop stool going to be available next week. Okay? Those of you guys been following this channel for a while, I built a cool stool to match my workbench. Bents. Work my mooch bench. And twitch and twitch be. I built a shop stool to match my workbench and it's pretty cool. A lot of people have been asking about plans on that and I'm finally gonna have them out to you as well as we're gonna be getting plans for the Alex Steel tool chest available soon on the website as well. So look forward to that. There's just so much work left to do, but one day at a time, we just keep pushing forward. Till next time, guys. What do you say, Logan? Samurai out. Samurai out. <laughs> That's right. See you guys.